Welcome, welcome to another episode of Della's Voice. I'm so excited for this week's um, interview. I waited a long time for this um, wonderful lady to show up on my show, and I'm so, 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 so excited to introduce her to you. Her name is Serena Brown Travis. She, she is a, an international best selling author. She's a motivational speaker. She's an entrepreneur, businesswoman. She's a mom. She's a wife. She wears so many hats. She just um, motivates the world. She puts her heart out there and she motivates people to live better lives. Uh, please help me welcome on Della's voice, Serena Brown Travis. Hi, Serena. Hi there. How are you? Excellent. Welcome. Welcome to Della's Voice. So happy you could be here today. Listen, well, I so appreciate you and the opportunity to be here. More importantly, I also appreciate the voice that you have, this platform that, that you are you have so graciously shared with me today. And uh, more importantly, for following your dream, being a, a, an agent of change and a voice of hope. So, and Lord knows at this time, we need it. So I certainly appreciate who you are and uh, who you've shown up to be in the world. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, Serena. Thank you so much. Um, you know, um, you wear so many hats. Uh, you are a wife. You are a mom. You are a daughter. You um, have your own business. Uh, you are an author. You are a speaker. How do you do it all, Serena? How do you do it all? Well, first of all, um, I thank God for all of the opportunities and the gifts and everything that has been imparted to me. So I certainly would not be here without some type of divine intervention. And so I am so grateful for that. And uh, a lot of prayer. It keeps me grounded. It keeps me keeps me going. And, you know, my father has a quote that he says, live full and die empty. And so one of the things that we always grew up knowing is that we don't want to be on our deathbed with a ghost of our dreams and hopes standing around us, looking at angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. So as a result of that, I figure any, I won't say anything that pops in my head, but anything that I feel led to do, we just do it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? No, seriously. <laughs> yeah. What's when your worst? heart is in the right place, Serena, uh, could nothing bad could happen. I, I mean, I mean that. Challenges will always come and, you know, it'll feel like it's bad. It, it'll feel like, you know, you have reached a breaking point or it feels like it's the end of the world. But we also know that in life, nothing is wasted. So even your worst day at some point, years down the line or months down the line ends up becoming your best day. And you get some of your most divine revelations from the times that your backs were up against the wall. And so that is the, the mantra that we try to live by. That's what I try to live by. And so my father, he says it best, live full and die empty. So don't let anything go to waste in your life. Not near a talent, near a goal. Just go for it. See what happens. I heard this before that if you, if you die with them, um, with the, the song in you, you're doing the world a disservice. Absolutely. So, right. So, so you, you, you say everybody has a purpose. You say that every single person that's here is here to do something. And last week I heard you um, talk and it was an amazingly motivational and inspirational um, talk. And I wondered, and I asked you if you would do me and the audience a favor and, um, and go through that speech because I thought it was amazing. The mask we need to wear. <laughs> I, I posed the question, where's your mask? And so we know now that if you go, if you go into a grocery store, you go into any public place, if you don't have a mask on, you're either getting death stares or death threats. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and so, it, you know, it's becomes a, a different time for us. It's become a different time for us socially. You know, no longer are us women wearing lipstick. I mean, we just we just have to get our eyebrows done and, and try to look good from, you know, from here up. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And so I pose the question, where's your mask? And and what I meant by that in terms of where's your mask is the first part M will be where what's your mission? 
What's your mission in life? And so I found that if you don't have a clear mission, you literally can go anywhere that the wind blows. And so that's not the way that, that life has been set up for us. I mean, we look at companies such as McDonald's or Burger King or IBM. There is a mission. They have a mission statement and they, you know, whatever their mission statement is, you know, whether it's we sell burgers and we'll do this by ensuring that we have the best burger possible for each and every customer. And so what that's my question to you, ladies and gentlemen, what is your mission? What's something that keeps you up at night and where and how do you find your purpose? But can I suggest to you that you only get that type of passion when you are clear and have a precise mission in your life? And so what's your mission? It can change year after year. As we know, we are in a political crisis. We're in a social injustice crisis. We are facing a climate issue. I mean, there's just so much happening around us. And so your goal and your mission may change from year to year. But that's, so for instance, my mission, I'm committed to the truth, no matter how painful and ugly it is. I'm committed to living a life of integrity. I'm committing to making an impact with my words and giving hope where there is none. I'm committed to service and helping others and leaving an impact on my community. And so there, uh, there, there's a quote that I once heard that I absolutely love is that every man and woman is born in the world to do something unique and something distinctive. And, and if he or she does not do it, it will never be done. And, mm-hmm. and I figured that is, that's quite the weight to carry with you. Yes. you know, yes. if, if God has given each and every one of us a particular talent, a particular gift, and if we choose for whatever reason to not follow through with it, who did we let down? in the process. Uh, everybody. You've, you've you've let down everyone. And so therefore I I am am pretty passionate about saying follow your voice, follow your dream, follow whatever has been imparted in you so that you can make sure you have an impact. And it doesn't have to be, you know, everyone's looking for the next big thing. It could be just an impact on your neighbor, an impact on your children, an impact on, in in your school system. It doesn't have to be a global impact. But eventually it will become a global impact. We mm-hmm. are here today because of some of the voices of our teachers. And and then they, they're they here. They were in our lives because of, of previous voices that they've heard. So your impact, you may not see it immediately, but your impact is significant. And so, you know, and I can, I can hear people say, well, you know, we're in a financial crisis and, and I've got to fro- focus on making money. And I'll, I'll say this to you. Impact drives income. I'll say that again. If you ever want to make, if you ever want to make a lot of money, impact someone's life. Without question, they will find a way to move heaven and earth to make sure that they can find a way to pay you back. Think about some of your teachers that you've had, or think about, you know, your mother, your father, your aunts and your uncles, people who have had a positive impact. There's nothing you would not do to make sure that their life becomes better on this side. So impact drives income, even as a business. I'm a, I'm a business owner, as, as mentioned in my introduction. And so when, when the, when the COVID-19 crisis happened, of course, you know, it was a scary, a scary time for all of us. Sales went down and people were hanging on closer to their pocketbooks. And even in being a new business, I knew immediately I had to put my faith where my fears were. And so as a restaurant owner, we started giving away everything we had. You can venture to say, well, Serena, that makes no sense. And it did not. (laughs) Financially, it made no sense whatsoever. But I had to put my faith where my fears were. And as a result, I impacted a community in the time of crisis. And within, within a couple of weeks, Everything shot right back up. Everything, everything has been fully restored. And so I'm so grateful for that. So I, I just got chills, by the way, when oh, you said that. I, I mean, oh. where is your mask? And we know that the first, the first letter in that is M. And I propose to you that that is your mission. What is your mission? And how do you find your purpose? And how do you get that mission so that you're not swayed just from any and everything? The second thing that I would like to propose to you would be A, adversity. 
Think it not strange that you'll face some fiery furnaces of the world. Usually, you know, we'll say, oh, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. And then the very next day, something will come and smack us in the face. Yeah. (laughs) Right back where we were. And then we'll ask ourselves, well, is it worth it? Do I have Mm -hmm. the choice? Can I Mm -hmm. do it? So think it not strange that once you find your mission in life, that you're going to find and you're going to face adversity immediately, I mean immediately, be it adversity on the outside or even in your own mind and with you questioning yourself whether or not I can do this. I'm sure I'll, I'll pose this question to you and, and it may be embarrassing to answer it. How many of you all have shared with a loved one or family member, hey, this is what I'm, I'm thinking about doing. I want to move my life in a different direction. And then someone, you find that they end up laughing at your goal and your dream. And Are you crazy? Yeah. So think it not strange that as soon as you declare what your mission is and you get serious about it and you get centered and you're prayed up that you're going to immediately, it, I mean, just, just don't be offended by it. You're going mm-hmm. to immediately face adversity. And so with that being said, how many of you all declared that 2020 would be your best year? We've had Facebook posts. We had everything. Year of clarity. Yeah. (laughs) It's our our vision year. Yeah. But here's what I propose to you is that it is still your best year. It is still your best year. In fact, I would even venture to say that you probably have more clarity now than you had in January or February, be it that the, the the global crisis has made you rethink your strategy. It didn't derail your dreams, but it certainly made you rethink your positioning and how you position yourself or reposition, reposition yourself to start achieving your goals and your dreams. So, you know, 2020, it started off good. You know, people were more positive. They were more optimistic. You know, we had our chest puffed out. You know, we're thinking like, we're going to do this thing for real, be it I'm going to lose weight for real or I'm going <laughs> yeah. to my dream for real. And then all of a sudden, we've got faced with issue after issue and not small issues. I mean, mm. the stuff that's going on right now, it's not small by, by no stretch of the imagination. And so I would um, I would venture to say to you that don't be alarmed when you face adversity. Don't be alarmed. In fact, that's how you almost know you're on the right track is you go, oh, the universe seems to conspire itself against me. I must be doing, I must be doing something, something good. So you said that. I must be getting closer. I like, I'm closer. right. Yeah. You have to be. I must be getting closer. And, yes. and we know that every, every, no, every no is getting closer to your yes. So make adversity and make no your vitamin to help you get closer and closer, to help you not give up. When you when you know you're close, when the closer you get, the more adversity you're gonna you're gonna face. And so in 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 life, you know that our finances are gonna be screwed up every now and again. We're gonna lose friends. We're you know our, our kids may get to acting crazy. But there there's a quote that I love is that adversity e- either causes a man to break or break records. And I'll say that again, adversity either causes a man to break or break records. And so I'll say to you, ladies and gentlemen, which one are you going to do? And breaking down is not an option. (laughs) Breaking down is not an option. That's why we have podcasts and and broadcasts just just as we have today. And that's why we're so grateful. And we could just take a minute to do thumbs up or little claps to (laughs) to Miss Della and her voice. platform today because she's also doing her part to make sure that you don't have a breakdown. Even in the midst of whatever's going on in her life, she's putting that aside and that behind her to say, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what it is, you can still stand and stand to be proud and be prosperous and still move forward. And so I would venture to say to you, first of all, we thank you for, for showing up with your gift and all of your talents for taking the time to do this on a Sunday afternoon when you could be doing anything but here you are encouraging the world to find their voice, to, to find some positivity in their life. And you're giving them strategies. And, and, and I mean, this is a strategy session to say, hey, you know what? Whatever's happening, it, it, it has come to pass. I, I'm not I don't care what's happening around me. I know what's in me. And I know that I am determined to, to make something of myself. So think it not strange that you face some fiery furnaces of the world. Think it not strange that you're going to face some adversity. You're not going to break down. 
you're going to break through. And so I have full faith in you that you are going to break through. And it seems like the closer we are to the finish line, as I mentioned, the more hurdles we face. Um, you know, but let your work and let your product and let your customer service speak louder than your critics. Adversity will come your way. Don't be alarmed by it. It's don't and don't take it personal. <laughs> don't, well, take it. don't take it personal. That that that's key. That's key. No, it has come to pass. And so now we talked about putting on your mask. The first one we said was mission, finding your mission in life. The second one is adversity. You will face adversity. And so once you once you're clear on those things, and again, like we just said, don't take it personal. Here's my third point. Find support. Find support. So whatever whatever that looks like, find the people you need in your corner to help you get to where you need to be. Now I'm not talking about a yes ma'am corner or a yes ma'am corner. I'm not talking about those because we know how dangerous those can be. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about people who can see things in you that you cannot see yourself. There's a quote that that my father says, and I'm sure you all have heard it. You cannot see the picture when you're in the frame. Mm -hmm. You cannot see the picture when you're in the frame. So I did not know. I, I grew up being, you know, Les Brown's daughter. I grew up just being behind the scenes. I had no desire to ever speak. I used to make that very clear. I'm not a speaker. This is not who I am. I am here to support my family. Oh my gosh, Serena. We would have missed out on you. Well, you know, again, it goes back to that first quote is that if if God has given you something, if he's given it to you, you sure better use it. Mm-hmm. You sure better use it. And so there and, and, and as difficult as this has been, there may be people that my father can't reach that maybe I can. And so that's why at this point it is so important to develop your purpose, your mission. It's important to develop your voice and your story. And it's important to be clear on what you need to do to get to the next level. And so that's why finding support, the correct support system that will help you get from point A to point B. When you ask for help, it's not because you're weak, but it's to remain strong. And so ask people, hey, I need some help in this area. I I saw you do something last week that may be beneficial to where I'm trying to go. And here, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen, most people like to be helpful to other people. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a difference if I ask you for something versus me saying, hey, could you help me out? Most people, we, I mean, I know everything seems crazy around us, but most people are genuinely nice, kind people who want to lend a helping hand and what they want to, to help other people. And right now, everyone needs a lot of help. In fact, when I was doing when, at, at my restaurant, when I was giving away the meals, I, I was focused on senior senior citizens. And I focused on children, of course, because, you know, they were out of school and who knows when they would ever receive their next meal. I had so many people give donations because they wanted to help. And so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, find support, find the support system that you need that will help you move in the right direction. Find the people that will see the best of you, not your critics, not the people who you know, remember when you were their drinking buddy, buddy 10 years ago, find the people who see things in you that you don't see in yourself, who can encourage you even when things look bleak and who can help strategize to help push you in a different direction. There's a quote that I love that says, we rise by lifting others. Mm. We rise by lifting others. And so the and, and find a support system that doesn't need to get the credit. When no one cares who gets who gets the credit, everyone wins. <laughs> when, when no one cares, you know, yeah. now, we must acknowledge those who have helped us. And so, you know, the likes of Robert J. Moore, my father, Les Brown, or even me being on this platform today with Miss Della. So you can acknowledge those that help you. But, you know, as long as no one has their ego in the way, then everyone can move in the right direction. So, again, I would not be here today if I did not have the support and encouragement from so many other people. And so my brother, uh, John Leslie Brown, he's a motivational speaker. And he says, who can you count on and who should you count out? And I'll let you think about that. Look, look at your life. Look at your, your friend list. Look at your, your Facebook list. Who can you count on and who should you count out? And once you make a list of that, then you won't be offended if you call your old college roommate or your bestie and you think that they're going to help you and going to 
going to, you know, lend their support. And, if, and don't be confused if they don't. Sometime it will be a perfect stranger that may lend you support that you would never expect. And I believe that God puts all kinds of people in our lives, as we know, for reasons, for seasons, and for a lifetime. And so just don't be, just find the support system that will help you out. Okay? Now, please be we talked about here's your mask number one we said your mission number two we said once you decide on your mission you're going to face adversity number three we once you have your mission you're going to face adversity you need to find a support system and the last one is keep the faith (laughs) now i know this sounds crazy because you're thinking uh serena the world is burning around me. <laughs> but trust me, if you keep the faith, if you if you hang on, if you never let go of your goal, of your dream, of what God has put in you, if you keep the faith, if you're steadfast and, and you find it that, that I don't care what comes my way, that you're going to keep the faith. Uh, there's a quote that I love that says, however hard the road, however difficult today, Tomorrow, things will get better. The truth is, tomorrow may not be better, but we must believe, behave, and act like it will be. So we don't know what tomorrow holds, but if today I believe and behave and act like tomorrow will be better, then somehow or another, tomorrow will be better. The circumstances may not change, but in my mind, Tomorrow will be better because I'm walking by faith. Nothing, like I mentioned earlier with my restaurant, it made no sense. My financial advisors were pulling their hair out. Like, why would you do this? This, 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 The the numbers aren't going to add up. We're at a time right now that I don't care what numbers, I don't care what numbers are looking like. I have to have enough faith in myself and, and enough faith in my divine power to know that this storm that we're in right now, This storm that you're in right now, and I'm not just talking about the global storm. I'm even talking about just you, the the idea of you finding the best in you, the idea of you putting to rest negative voices in your head, the idea of you looking at your dream that you once pushed aside. And now something in you is saying, this might be possible. I would advise you to keep the faith because the truth of the matter is it is possible. And you, 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 yes, you are the one that's going to bring everything to fruition. And you are the one with the gift, with the goal, with the vision. It just is going to take a little work. And so I say to you, keep, keep, keep the faith. When I take a look at my father's career, and and if you all know him, you know that he was uh, adopted and abandoned on a on a a floor. Uh, He was born in an abandoned building. His birth mother left him. He was adopted to the grandmother that I knew, Miss Mamie Brown, but he had every reason to give up. And how many of us have that story that you look around and you go, there's no way I'm getting out of this. <laughs> I mean, there, it's just not possible. And a lot of us, including myself at one point in my life, I was okay with just being regular. It's okay. I was okay with just working the back of the room. I knew I had gifts and talents, but I was okay just supporting others and throwing my gifts and talents behind other people. You know, how many of us have said, oh, I just like the back of the room. I just like to play second. (laughs) I would venture to say to you that there's more in you than you can ever begin to imagine. And so even if it looks crazy, you say, I don't see it. Well, I would say to you, keep the faith, whether someone speaks positivity over your life, Whether you just happen to scroll on Facebook and find this this broadcast, this is this is your key right here to keep the faith, the voice and and the advice and the encouragement that's being given on on this broadcast on a weekly basis is helping you find your footing and to keep the faith. And so I don't care what financial crisis we're facing and, and what troubles we had before. You've had troubles in the past. This isn't new. <laughs> I mean, the truth of the matter is, if we, we, we're, we're thinking we're stuck, but the truth is we're not. We have been in a crisis before. You have been in a crisis before. Now I can hear you say, well, the crisis didn't require me to wear a mask and I have hand sanitizer and, and all of that. 
But the fact of the matter is you face a crisis that require a different part of you. And so now this crisis that we're in, it requires a different shift. The personal crisis that you may be facing, the idea of giving up, it requires a different shift. It requires a different part of you to say, this is still possible. And so again, I venture to you to say, keep the faith. Do not give up. Giving up is not an option. Feed your faith and let your fear start to death. When I turn on the news now, I listen for about 10 minutes and then I'm done because there's nothing else the news is going to tell me that I don't already know. So feed your faith. Broadcasts like this, books that are out there that, that will continue to encourage you. Feed your faith and let your fears starve to death. And so I'll ask you again, where's your mask, your mission? Know that you'll face adversity. Find a support system and keep the faith. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're awesome, Serena. Thank you so much for all, all, all of this. Um, you brought me to um, the topic of books. Yes. And so um, you're uh, an international best-selling author for, um, so there's this little children's book called Perfect Penny Positive Words. Yeah. And that is the story of a little um, little penny who was born in a dumpster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, she she lives with her tools. She finds strategies, and she is just full of positivity. Where did that come from? Where did you get that idea? You know, the, the first part of the idea is I, I used to be a substitute teacher, and I realized that when students were facing tough times and they come from, you know, adverse lifestyles, there were no children's books that identified a challenge and a challenging lifestyle, and then brought them up to say, hey, you know what? You don't have to stay stuck here. And so there's nothing worse than being born, you know, than being born in a dumpster. There's no lower denomination of our money than a penny. And Mm so she started from the bottom. But whatever came her way, she was still she was still positive in in what she thought. And so because I was a victim of, of abusive words and and I know that most people are like, well, how is that possible? You know, you're Les Brown's daughter. How do you mean? And so, but because I was mentally and emotionally abused, I understand that it it was words that did all of that to me. No one put their hands on me. No one gave me a black eye. But I, and you know, in, in some respect, you go, well, at least if someone did give me a black eye, at least everyone would know what was wrong with me. But I had a mental block and it all resulted from people spewing negative words over my life. And so once I did the work that I needed to do, I realized that in my life and in my children's lives and in everyone around me, that we're going to make it a point to make to do nothing but speak positive words only. So that's where that's where the basis of the book came from. Mm, that's awesome. I can just imagine the lives that uh, that book has touched. What are you hoping to accomplish uh, in the world of children? You know, what What I want to accomplish in the world of children is letting them know no matter where you start, it's about how you finish. And so, you know, sometimes some of us adults can be cruel. We can, you know, say things to kids as a joke. Oh, hey, look at big head come in the room or Ooh, look at those big feet or, you know, there's things that that we do in our everyday social life that we we like to say, oh, it's just a joke, but it affects children much differently. And so I want children to know no matter what, who speaks what over you and what vile words are spoken into your life, that you 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 reject that. And you say, you know what, if you can't speak to me with positive words, our conversation is done. And so. I don't want anyone else to be stuck like me over negative, nasty words uh, spoken into someone's life. Hmm. Thank you. Um, so you have uh, another book, Positive Positive Words Only. Yes. What is that? Could you t- tell us Absolutely. about that? Absolutely. Yeah, so this will be my first book for adults. <laughs> and wow. so, yes, and so uh, some the concept of the book again, it's about positive words. So I actually go into detail, you know, into into you know some of the things that happened to me in my adult life. And you know, again, most people are looking for this big catalyst. You know, oh well, did someone die? Was there a tragedy? And and once I had to sit back and figure out what happened, I realized again, 
It was the words and expectations and low expectations. One of the things that my no rise to low expectations. Even though in my daily life I was around my father and you know we would go out on the road and we would speak and, and have seminars and all that good stuff, I felt like I was living a lie because the truth of the matter is I didn't feel valuable. I didn't feel like I was enough. I didn't feel pretty. I didn't feel, you know, all of the all of the things that most people are like, oh my goodness, you're so vibrant, you're so positive. And I'm thinking like, if you only knew, (laughs) you know, I really, I really wish we could switch places so that I can get the coaching and teaching um, that, you know, that each recipient um, was getting. And so I just, I I want to, the book is designed to meet people where they are. You know, most people don't really recognize verbal and and emotional trauma. And so now it's starting to become recognized as just as traumatic as, you know, some physical trauma. And so it was bad. It was it was bad. But because I identified what was going on, and then again, even for myself, if you're not speaking positive words, I ha- I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do you. Our conversation is over. And so to be intentional, the book is, talks about being intentional on how you speak positive words, being intentional on how you deal with relationships that may not be as positive as you want. And uh, yeah, I do believe that you have to cut some people off. And, you know, it's almost like just getting pruned. And sometimes it's painful. You don't want to do it. And you go, oh, well, my uncle has been like this forever. Or, oh, my parents have been like this forever. But the, the way it affects you, if it has that type of impact on you, you've got to either correct it or you cut it off. And so that's what the book is for. It's for everyone. It's for you know, young adults for for us older people who who have been hiding our scars for so long. And so I appreciate you asking me about the book, but that that is the book, Positive Words Only, Reshaping Your Life and Your Business and Reshaping Yourself. Amazing. So that people can, uh, can if they want to get your book, they can go to www.serenabrowntravis.com. Yes, and- in fact, in fact we, we will be uh, doing a pre-release this week. So we are like right on time for that. Woo! I know. So uh, make sure you follow me on my on my uh, Facebook page, author Serena Brown Travis. You can all, and that's on Facebook, of course, or you can uh, go to my website and follow me there. Uh, yes, it is going to be released this week. So it's almost like I'm really doing this thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, Serena, um, when did you start this um, journey of self like, I mean, you know, uh, okay, so, so for a lot of people, they'll be like, oh, well, you you, you, you were raised in a, in a, I know. Um, I know. All the talk, but, and, but you, you weren't ready. So at some point you got ready and you realized that it's up to you um, to, 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 to wake up and get there. I call it the spiritual awakening because that's what happened to me. So when, when was it for you? You know what? It was when everything went wrong in my life. And that it's when everything went wrong. So my body, in fact, was was becoming a symptom of what was happening in my head. So uh, the doctors found several lumps in, in my breast. And so at that time, they thought, you know, maybe she has breast cancer. After that, my husband and I hit, hit a rough place in our in our marriage. Thankfully, we made it. So we're still here and still happily married. Um, you know, of course, then once a marriage has some challenges, then your children want to start acting crazy. And after that, my father became sick and all of my siblings and I had to focus our attention and energies on him. After that, I had a dear family member that became addicted to drugs. So then we had to shift our focus and and work with him. And so it was everything was going wrong. I mean, business plateaued. I I was saying I can so resonate with you saying how um, nothing was working and that was your sign and and your body was telling you, um, yeah, yeah, there's something going wrong. And I remember getting sick, so sick, in fact, that I thought I was going to die. Um, And and it was like it was like, what is going on? What am I supposed to be learning from this right now? What are are you, God, are you trying to tell me something? Because I. I didn't know God back then. Um, that was, I think, uh, that was my spiritual awakening for sure. But back to you, Serena, please. Right. So as I was mentioning, everything was going wrong. And and at that time, uh, you know, since you mentioned God, I gave just a, a little small, you know, I knew God existed. I grew up in church, you know, all of that. But, you know, then I thought, well, 
you know, I, I'm just going to adapt my own beliefs and, you know, just try to be a good person. You, you know how we, we, we make things up as, as we go along, you know. And so everything was wrong. Everything was wrong. Like I mentioned, my body was telling me things were wrong. Marriage was going crazy. My children, my family was falling apart. The business had plateaued. And so then I just simply said a small heart prayer. God help me. Now, I really didn't expect that he would help me, but, you know, just when, you know, it's almost like I mentioned, when your back is up against the wall, mm. you know, fine. Okay, God, just help me. And so nothing happened. Then I was mad. Then I said, well, I knew, you know, I was upset with God. You know, I did what you told me to do. I prayed. I mentioned your name. And so then, then the voice came to me that I've got to get much deeper than simply God help me. So, you know, the prayer changed to God help me. God show me, reveal to me what's happening. Change me, change my heart, prune my spirit, you know, all of those things to help get me right. And it did not happen immediately. It's not a zap. Yeah, it is. It's not a zap, you know. But I knew, I knew that finally I could focus and I could get one thing solved a day. And so every day I was working on something, repairing something, um, you know, having different conversations with my husband or with my children, going to counseling. I was writing. I was just trying to get everything toxic out of me. And bit by bit, I felt relief. It's almost like I felt a brick being lifted off of my chest, brick by brick. And so then the fact of the matter is I, I heard in my spirit, when I prayed, God help me, it was an incomplete sentence. But finally, God started to help me and show me the way and to give me light. And so as a result, and it took it took about three years. This like like we, you know, we joked around and said it's not a zap. And by no stretch of the imagination, it's not a zap. I had to let some relationships go. That yeah. of course was painful. Um, you know, some friends, I had to just let them drop off and and that was okay too. And so when you ask for that, it, it is a pruning. It, it, is, it is a pruning process. But I realize it's almost like that story we heard, we all, we heard growing up about a dog sitting on a nail and the dog was sitting on the, on the nail and he was moaning. And so the neighbor said to the other neighbor, Hey, why is your dog moaning? Oh, well, he's sitting on a nail. The neighbor said, Well, why doesn't he just get up? And the neighbor re- responded and said, It doesn't hurt bad enough. Yes. And I was at the point that it was hurting too bad. I could not keep moaning and groaning through life sitting on this nail. And then when I pulled the nail out, it still hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it still hurt, but it gave me relief. And mm-hmm. so what I, I bet I say to you all and, and, you know, and all of us probably have this nail story per se. But I finally got relief as painful as the process was, as painting as the pruning was. But once I did all that, I finally got relief and clarity. And that's more most important. Mm, mm, So good. Um, Medea says when we surrender is when we uh, when the shift happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I love that. In fact, I'm going to write that down. But absolutely. I mean, we try to do it on our own and we fail each and every time. And it's not like we haven't heard people say you can't do it on your own. We've heard we've all heard it. But somehow or another, I thought I was going to psych out God. You know, I was I was going to outsmart him. And and we've all heard the phrase that your arms are too short to box with God. So, again, It it usually only happens when our life is facing adversity. Yeah. You you know, when things are going well, then we don't need, you know, we technically, we don't look for a a source of inspiration, a source of hope. And, you know, we're just thinking that we've done all this goodness on our own. But the fact of the matter is once my life hits so, so many bumps in the road, that is when I decided I've got I've got to try to get this thing right. I'm miserable. I'm going to die. I, I was literally I was suffocating. I was suffocating and hoping I didn't wake up. And I knew that was a problem when there's so many other people who you know are praying for help or you know health and strength. And I was literally praying not to wake up. That's when I knew I'm in a rough spot and I've got to get myself out of it. Holy moly! Yes. Yes. And so when you're going through um, a, a, a rough time like that, um, I, anyways, for me, it was like that. Um, 
I was like, but why is this happening to me? I'm so nice. I'm such a nice, per nice person. I, I do this and I do this and I do this, but why, 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 why? And it's like, when you when the shift happens, you finally look for what's going wrong inside and not on the outside. Right. And, you know, and the shift and the shift is always internal. You know, I was looking for other people to rescue me. I wanted other people to to miraculously see that something was wrong with me and then say, hey, Serena, what's wrong? But as long as you're, you know, serving others and doing things for others or you know, working for other people, no one usually stops and says, hey, something's wrong. Something's off, you know, and I used to play it off so well. I mean, again, mm -hmm. the daughter, I can smile, I can put on a girdle, I can, you know, put on some good makeup and yeah. it can happen. But the truth of the matter is I was hoping that someone else would see it and then make me have to confess. But of course it didn't happen like that either. And so this was one of those make doing a self assessment. And we usually are not good at doing a self assessment because we're used we're used to just, you know, turning it on. You know, like there you you know how we do. We get out the car, we see a group of people, we go, All right, here we go. And then we mm. turn it on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it the the shift definitely had to happen internal. I had to do the hard work for myself. And that's what makes it difficult because you have to be honest with yourself. No one usually likes to even be honest with yourself. I, I had to yeah, I had to sit in my feelings and sit in what really happened. Not not the story that I made, you know, that I made up. I had to really sit in it. And um, you know, so once I started to dissect it and pull layers apart and you know, I even went to counseling just to help make sure I was doing this thing correctly. Um, and so I'm just, I, I'm, I, I remember older people would say, I thank God for my mind. And I used to think that was funny, but now I understand mm -hmm. I woke up and say, Lord, I thank you for keeping me in my right mind because mm -hmm. that, that is so significant to what we're facing right now. Uh, uh, what a painful process that is going through all of that. It's, it's painful, but it, it pays off at the end. And it's, uh, it's, I think it's a process that never finishes because we're forever looking. Um, so thank you for that honesty. Mm -hmm. um, I also, um, one thing I noticed was that when I started to change, the people around me changed and yeah. no longer were they as annoying <laughs> as they used to be. <laughs> What's your take on that? You know, what? Your, your perception also shifted. And so I, you know, I feel like there are times where, you know, you, you're, you grew up, you know, quote unquote, you grew up, your perception shifted. Now, some people have not changed. Like I said, I had to lose some friends and some family relationships to get my mind where it needed to be. They are still the same people. I'm also at a space in my life where I don't point the finger. In fact, I have more compassion than anger. Um, I care about their well-being, even though they hurt me. I still care how they are. And then I even, you know, went back and said, mm, you, you're like this because of these things that have happened to you. And I still love you. I just have to cut off the access that you have to me. You don't get to hurt me anymore. You don't get to make jokes on me anymore. You don't get to just spew negative words over me. And so the people have remained the same. Your perspective of them. You know, my, my thing now is just to see the very best in people, period. And so I look for the smallest things or that I can just say, you know, I absolutely like you. Now, there could be a group of people say, oh, we don't like her because of this. And I can meet someone and go, oh, I think they're great. Is that the person you said you don't like? <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's it's all about a perspective shift. You know, your my perspective has shifted. Again, we're in a global crisis, but there's a select few of us, including you and probably most of your audience, that can still see a silver lining. It's about shifting the perspective we don't mind wearing our masks because we know eventually number one we're keeping ourselves safe and eventually this will roll over and so it's all about perspective shifting you know we don't mind you know driving a broken down car or you know wearing shoes that may have holes in it or not dressing the best because we can't afford it because we know eventually we'll be able to get it it's a about a shift in perspective. And so, yeah, when you say that, you know, your friends were you, 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 they weren't as annoying, your perspective 
change. I at, at this point in life, I don't even have time to look at, even if it's a bad situation, I'm still trying to find the silver lining. And then there's sometimes you go, oh, that's a bad situation. And you, and you have to walk <laughs> away from it. But your perspective has shifted. And I think that's the blessing of, you know, personal development and what you do and what we do um, as colleagues is that we're just trying to shift the perspective. The reality is things may not have changed, but I change. My mm-hmm. heart has changed. My mind has changed. The way I see it has changed. And my and therefore, my perspective has shifted. Awesome. One of the best things I heard was uh, by Dr. Wayne Dyer. He said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Absolutely. That's and, exactly and, what you said. And yeah. you're such a, a fantastic teacher, but that quote definitely sums it up. I, I do want to talk about um, your your restaurant a, a, a little bit. It's called uh, The Good Kitchen, 614. Um, for, first of all, why did you name it The Good Kitchen, 614? Where did that come from? Well, uh, my husband and I, prior to having the restaurant, and it's a small carryout restaurant, prior to the restaurant, we had a food truck, and the food truck was called the Rolling Kitchen. And then uh, the food truck was really beat up. It, you know, it was, we painted it black to try to make it look, you know, make it look like something. And then someone eventually said, "Hey, this is the ugly black truck." So we even took that right. It, it, most people saw it as an insult, but like I said, it's about changing your 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 perspective. And so the lady called it the ugly black truck, and I said, "I love that." So she's all apologetic, and I'm like, "No, that." That's a perfect name. So as a result, we had the, the, the rolling kitchen on the front side, the ugly back, the ugly black truck on the black, on the back side. Um, and so therefore, when we when we got into a brick and mortar, um, of course, we still had our people who loved us. And I figure the good kitchen, like, you know, the rolling kitchen. So the good kitchen, it would be a more appropriate name. And then and then talking about business and, and listening to your customers and, and perspective. We had a customer say, and she was just talking to someone else, and she said, everything is good. So I didn't even have to hire a marketing firm or anyone else. I just listened. uh, And, you know, and people have, you know, thankfully in this case, people have given me what I needed to, you know, in terms of my tagline or, you know, whatever else, whatever marketing tools we need. So the Good Kitchen 614, because that's the area code here in Columbus, Ohio. and And then the tagline is where everything is good. And that was because the customer said everything is good. And so we figured, there we go. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I can certainly appreciate uh, owning your own business. I, I've owned my own business for the past 17 years, and I work there with my husband. So I also know uh, the struggles of working with your spouse and all of the challenges. <laughs> yes, uh, I said, I'm the boss. <laughs> We, we we as a husband and wife team, and I'm sure you could too, we could write a book on working together and it is tough, tough, tough. <laughs> you, you're on to something, Serena. That could be a book. And I know what goes into owning your own business. It's a lot of work. Um, so my hat's off to you, Serena. Thank you. You're such a wonderful person. I am so, so, so grateful to have met you. I cannot take any of the credit. I'm just grateful that God has protected me and covered me and hopefully uh, continues to make me a voice uh, and the agent of change for, for the time that we're in right now. And here, I'm not going to keep you much longer because I know you got a whole bunch of stuff to take care of. I thank you so, so much, Serena. Thank you. And again, thank you for who you are, who you are to the world and how you've shown up. And because of you, the world will be a better place. I, I appreciate it. You are a, you are a shining star, uh, Serena. Uh, and, and I so appreciate getting to know you. Uh, I want to thank everyone who's joined in today to, uh, to watch us and to listen to this wonderful, wonderful woman. Um, I hope you take this to heart. Uh, take what you need and leave the rest. Share it with your friends. Share it with your loved ones because these are words of wisdom. Uh, Thank you again. And this has been Della's voice, hoping to spark your soul. Stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.